Well, good morning. Welcome here to the Church of St. Pascal Balon on the east side of St. Paul. I'm Deacon Richard Moore, and thank you for joining me on this Monday after Christmas as we're in our Christmas season, as we gather together to listen to Scripture and to pray together. And today we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Innocents, the Martyrs. We're going to start today in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. As we gather today, we're, we're mindful always, especially in this joyful time of Christmas, of God's great love for each and every one of us. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Father, the holy innocents offered you praise by the death they suffered for Christ. May our lives bear witness to the faith we profess with our lips. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from 1 John. Beloved, this is the message that we have heard from Jesus Christ and proclaim to you. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him, while we continue to walk in darkness, we lie and do not act in truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of his son Jesus cleanses us from all sin. If we say we are without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we acknowledge our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from every wrongdoing. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm today is from the uh, 121st Psalm. Our soul has been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Had not the Lord been with us when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive when their fury was inflamed against us. Our soul has been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Then would the waters have overwhelmed us, the torrent would have swept over us. Over us then would have swept the raging waters. Our soul has been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Broken was the snare, and we were freed. Our help is the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Our soul has been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. May the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Magi had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you. Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. Joseph rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. He stayed there until the death of Herod that what the Lord has said through the prophet might be fulfilled. Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realized he had been deceived by the Magi, 
He became furious. He ordered the massacre of all the boys in Bethlehem in its vicinity, two years old and under. In accordance with the time he had certain from the Magi. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. A voice was heard in Ramah, sobbing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children, and she would not be consoled, since they were no more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, here we are in Christmas. We've had this great joy of celebrating Christmas. God coming into our world, walking among us, the love of God being in our humanity. And then we have this reading today, and we do it every Christmas, but it, it just slaps us back to a harsh reality of life, that this world that Jesus entered into, that God entered into, is a world of evil and good, and there's just this, a lot of tension. A lot of bad things, unfortunately, happen. There would be those that might um, discount this, saying, oh, this is just sort of a made-up story. It didn't really happen. But what we know of Herod from historical sources, this was a madman. He would do anything to keep his power. He colluded with the Romans, and that means he would have been a very cruel leader to suppress the people, to keep them peaceful for the Romans, to keep that tax money coming in. We know that he murdered his wife, one of his brothers, a couple of his brother-in-laws, and countless others. So to murder and get rid of maybe 20 or so young male children, two years old and younger infants, wouldn't have been nothing to him. His cruelty was sort of unmatched in some ways. But we're reminded in our first reading from John that God is light and there is no darkness in God. But as this world continues to walk in darkness, we are called as people of faith, people of hope, people that have seen the light of Christ to be light in the midst of such darkness in our world. Dr. Martin Luther King, I think, brings it to a more modern approach. He said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And that's what I think John and his epistle today is, is getting at. And we need to be that light, that love for the world that, that drives out the darkness and the hate. Today, maybe our focus is on children, young children. How are we light to the darkness of the world that wants to hurt children? We think of children in the womb and, and the great sin of abortion. But do we also look at how do we treat mothers when they're pregnant? especially those that are poor? Do we give them access to the proper food and shelter and clothing and the things they need and the medical, especially the medical care they need to bring this blessed gift to life? And once a child is born, how are we light to that child? How are we love to that child? How do we provide for them for their shelter, for their food, their clothing? their medical needs? How do we provide for their parents that might need help? How do we provide for them as they get older in their education to, to blossom into who God created them to be? How do we provide those opportunities as people of Christ? There's so many ways to do that, to be involved in forming political legislation to help children, to go out and help children ourselves by so many ways. 
I know that many people that I know of have been mentors to children, helping provide guidance to those children, such an important thing. For years, I was involved as a 3M tutor, going into the high schools and tutoring math with students there. And when I first started, I went to one of the local high schools and I thought, oh, I'm going to go in. And, you know, I had these great ideas that I'd help students do with their calculus and all sorts of things. And when I got there, they said, you know, our greatest need is this, this remedial math class. There's one teacher and there's like 30, 40 students that are all at different levels. Could you just help there? And I said, well, I can do that. So I went in there and it was a wonderful opportunity for, for me to go in and, and, yeah, help them with their math. But what I found out is these children had so many other needs, these young adults in high school. They needed to be fed. They needed somebody to just be there for them to show up once in a while, to listen to them, and to help them with their math and their school. There's so many ways we can do that to, to help form children, to be there for children. So today we're reminded that as followers of Jesus, we are to be light and love, especially for the young and vulnerable in our world. As a people of God, one way we are light for the world is we pray for the world. So let us offer our prayers together. Lord, we pray for our church that we may be a beacon of light to the world and be God's love to all those that need God's love in our world. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for world leaders around the world that they would work to protect children, to help children, to help children thrive, we pray to the Lord. Pray for our local school here, St. Pascal Balon Regional School, Catholic School, that the children here would thrive and become who God wants them to be. We pray to the Lord. Pray for all those that are sick and suffering in any way in our world. That the Lord Jesus would give them hope. The Lord Jesus would give them comfort and strength and healing. We pray to the Lord. Pray for those that have died and gone before us. Especially Barbara Carthur. We pray that they would be in the loving embrace of Jesus forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, we offer you these prayers that you confidence you are listening. And we offer them through your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, let us pray in confidence the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Let us now offer each other a sign of peace. If you're with somebody, offer them peace. I offer you the peace of Christ today. If you're not with anybody, let's just take a moment to all pray together for those we know in our lives that need peace.
This time, let us offer together an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, by a wordless profession of faith in your Son, the innocents were crowned with life at his birth. May all people receive your holy gifts today and come to share in the fullness of salvation. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, have a wonderful day wherever you are. Many blessings on you today. And remember that in the face of a world that may seem dark at times, we are the light. Our faith in Christ makes us the light and the hope of the world. Have a wonderful and beautiful day.